Well, good evening, my friends in Occoni. Once more, we meet like this to share around God's word, and it's good to have the privilege to do so. Captain Tom has burst into our lives over the past few weeks with his walking marathon on his recently replaced hip joint. His aim was to raise a thousand pounds for the National Health Service, and as you know, he has raised over twenty-five million pounds. We uh, we salute him for his dogged uh, determination pacing around his home garden in order to attain his aim and to achieve this wonderful uh, amount of money. Walking is something the believer is called to do. Among the ancients we are told that uh, Enoch walked with God and so too did Noah and they were commended for it. And we know that this image of walking is carried over into the New Testament. The Apostle Paul, for example, speaks more than once about the need for a godly walk. That is a godly way of life which commends our Saviour to a lost world. I've been struck by that picture as it appears in the first two sections here of Psalm 119. I'm going to read those verses to you. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous rules. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies I delight as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. The psalm opens with a declaration that the truly happy man or woman is one whose way is blameless. So immediately we are introduced to a path or a pathway as an image or picture of the human life or lifestyle. We make our way through life and says the psalmist, those who are most happy and blessed are those who walk in the law of the Lord. This happy, rich, full life which they enjoy is characterized by a number of things which the psalmist mentions here and which come to us as believers with a profound challenge. As we've read already, he says, first of all, their way is blameless. The idea is that of sincerity and purity, that which is uncontaminated by sin. Now at once we feel unworthy, we feel guilty, for we know of ourselves that we are not blameless. But in following the living word of God, in resting in the one who is God's perfect final word for us, the word made flesh who came to save us in trusting him, we are forgiven, cleansed and called to holy living. So their way is blameless, according to verse 1. According to verse 3, these people, they do no wrong. Now again, perfect sinlessness is not in view here. Rather, in view is the purpose and the direction of their lives. One commentator says they intend to do right. Another says they do not make a trade of sinning. Aware of their imperfections, they have set their sights by the grace of God, on living righteously. They want to please God. Their way is blameless. They do no wrong, according to verse 3. According to verse 6, they will not be put to shame. And the idea here is that the child of God will not in the end be disappointed. Here, we are disparaged. We are criticized. We are even despised for our faith by many in our world today. But our hopes are founded on the one who is sure. 
and we will in the end not be put to shame. And then finally, they praise God with an upright heart, according to verse 7. Um, because they're in a right relationship to God, because they're walking in his way, their lives can be anthems of praise and adoration to the one they serve as Lord. Now, this is not our own doing. We are not offering praise out of paltry, self-righteous hearts, but out of hearts which by grace have been transformed and made alive through faith in God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So here is the description, if you like, of the life that is full and rich and happy. Now, the psalmist poses the obvious question. If joy and fulfillment and true happiness come to those who walk in this way, who live in this way, how can we attain to it? How can we walk in God's way? Or as the psalmist puts it himself in verse 9 here, how can a young man keep his way pure? How is such a lifestyle attainable? How can we meet the demands and the standards set down here in this psalm? Well, verse 10 tells us that it is possible really for us to wander from it. Uh, The the, the request, the prayer of the psalmist there in verse 10 says, let me not wander from your commandments. So we ask again, how can a young man keep his way pure? And the answer comes back, by guarding it according to your word. And the picture of guarding here is instructive. One commentator uh, explains it by by talking about keeping the road well repaired, keeping the way uh, smooth, keeping it in good condition, and in that sense, guarding it. Another way of thinking of it is is putting a fence around it, if you like, fencing the road to stave off ambushes and, and attacks. How can our walk be so protected and guarded? How? By the word of God. You know that there are only two verses in the whole of this long psalm of 176 verses where the word of God is not mentioned explicitly. Only two verses. and The the word of God is at the centre of the psalmist's thoughts here. And, And so God's word is central. It is paramount. It is in the place of supreme importance if the child of God is to walk in the way of God and to please him. He mention some important principles here with regard to God's word. In verse 11, he says we are to store God's word in our hearts. In order to avoid falling into sin, we are to store it in our hearts. Now, store doesn't mean picking at it or visiting it occasionally or trifling with it. It means filling our minds with it. It means memorizing it and its principles so that it can be called to mind in times of attack and vulnerability. We are to store God's word in our hearts. Verse 12 tells us that we are to uh, look to him for understanding of it. The request is, teach me your statutes, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. Spiritual instruction is from him. It doesn't come from mere human research or human wisdom. We learn from him. And that's why, dear friends, Bible reading and prayer Go so clearly together. We bow at his feet acknowledging our weakness and our need and our dullness of understanding. And then our hearts are opened by the Spirit to his instruction, to his word and to his guidance. We are to store God's word in our hearts. We are to look to him for understanding of it. And verse 15 tells us we are to meditate upon it. The psalmist says, I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. Uh, Christian meditation has nothing to do with the vain exercises of men who call upon us to empty our minds or to look for wisdom and guidance in human philosophies or ideas. Christian meditation is to fill our minds with his word, his truth, to read it, think it through, call it to mind and chew it over as it were. We used to have, I used to have an old coffee percolator, the old type that you, uh, there was a pipe 
uh, that went up the centre and a, a little basket at the top with holes in it. And you put the coffee uh, granules into the little basket at the top and fill the, the percolator with water and then you boil it. And the water would boil up through the middle pipe and down through the grains of coffee. And the more you boiled it, the more the water percolated through the coffee and the richer the coffee became. That's meditation. That's meditation. We are to do that with God's word. We are to delight in its richness by calling it to mind and thinking upon it often. Well, we're to store God's word in our hearts. We're to look to him for understanding of it. We are to meditate upon it. And then verse 13 tells us that we are to declare it. The psalmist says, With my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth. God's word is to be shared. It is to be sounded out from our lips, backed up by consistent, spirit-filled lives, so that a powerful testimony is brought before the world and the way of Christ is commended and validated by the lives of his people. What a challenge. Store up God's word in our hearts. Look to him for understanding of it. Meditate upon it and declare it to a lost world. Well, we are rightfully full of admiration for Captain Tom and for what he has achieved by his walk. But you know, the walk to which we as believers have been called brings blessing and benefits to men and women which will long endure after his £25 million has been spent. The walk which we are called to reveals the love and salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ and is the means in God's hand of speaking to others and bringing them to faith and to that gift of eternal life. So the Apostle Paul encourages us. He says, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. He says, walk as children of the light. He tells us to do our best to discern what is pleasing to the Lord, looking carefully how we walk, not as unwise, but as wise. What a challenge. I love what the Apostle John says in his last little letter, the third letter. He says this, Nothing gives him greater delight than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Well, may our lives delight our Lord and Saviour. May we live for his glory. May we walk in his ways. May we commend him to a lost world. Let's pray. Our Father, we ask for your grace and your help to do what we cannot do by ourselves to walk in this blamelessness and this uprightness of heart and in so walking to commend our precious Lord Jesus to a lost and dying world. Help us, Lord, by your grace to bring glory and honour to the name of Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.